G'day and welcome back to the Not So Weekly Weekly News from RC Model Reviews. And look, I'm old, I've got a list because I can't remember even what day of the week it is now. But starting off, UHF, UHF RC Systems. Now I've mentioned this a couple of times in the past and the first video in the UHF RC Systems series will either be up now or going up very shortly depending on the sequence in which I upload things. Um, the first one is kind of an introductory. It tells you, you know, what UHF does, how it does it, when you might want to use it, when you wouldn't want to use it, what the pros are, what the cons are, you know, all the stuff you need before you decide, hey, you know, UHF is the thing for me or it's not for me, because those are important things. If it's not going to be any use to you, then, you know, you wouldn't want to buy it. But we'll look at that. Then be moving on to look at the individual systems, and there are quite a few of them, as you'll see. And just comparing them in terms of their performance, their cost, you know, and, and other little aspects that perhaps not have been covered in the past by other reviewers online. This is probably going to be the most comprehensive and in-depth um, review of UHF RC systems ever undertaken on YouTube. So stay tuned for that. Um, I've put in a lot of time already, and there's still a lot of time to go. It's, it's been the most labor-intensive review series that I have ever done and it's the kind of stuff I'd probably put on my premium channel if I decided to have one so bear that in mind when you're watching those videos and see if you would be pre prepared to pay for that if I ever decided to go that way. Right, <clears throat> um, also also this week uh, within the next seven days the top end mini quad now if you want to see how it flies go to the video I put on my XJet channel I'll put a link in the description of this one so you can find it easily and that's the quad I was flying when I took the video footage that's the onboard camera footage from that and you'll see it flies really really well especially in the hands of a nana like me I mean if I can fly one one of these quads like that then there's hope for everybody honestly um, and I chose it not because it's the fastest because it's not not because it's the most nimble because it, it's probably not um, and not because it's the cheapest, because it's certainly not. I chose it because it just, it, the whole package came together and it was a quad that I feel very, very comfortable flying. I can push that quad much harder than, and get away with it, than I can push my other quads. Now, having said that, all the mini quads that I've reviewed have been really, really good. They just, it's just the genre of model that is just fantastic to fly and I'm so glad I've got it, because without it, I wouldn't have been flying for months now. Um, so I really, you, you buy any of the mini quads, build any of the mini quads, you will be happy. You will be definitely happy. This one is the one that ticks all my boxes. It may not be the one that ticks your boxes. You may be after something that's absolutely the fastest mini quad on the planet, in which case this isn't the mini quad for you. You may be after a mini quad that is, you know, perhaps the most absolutely fantastically aerobatic. Well, this probably isn't either, but you know, um, I just wanted a quad that I could take out, fly it, smash it up, not have to worry about repairing it because it is probably the toughest of all the mini quads. It's, it's just, I'll put this one through hell and it hasn't blinked once. Um, and it is so predictable. I think predictable is the big thing. I mean, I've tuned all my mini quads to be as close as I can to each other. This one, it just gives me so much confidence in flying it. So stay tuned and you'll find out what it is if you can't guess from looking at the video I posted on my XJ channel. Now, <clears throat> Fixed wing, as we know in the video I posted earlier, um, you know, fixed wing flying is a big problem for me, even more so now than it has been in the past with CAA's revised maps and things. So I've decided to do something a little bit lateral. Let's think laterally about this now. Um, there's a lot of, there are some places I can fly mini quads because even though it's not legal yet, our regulator is introducing, or well, they've put a new law before parliament, which basically says you can fly a model right up to the boundary of an airfield. So right up next to an airfield, so long, so long as you don't exceed the height of any structure that is within 100 meters of your model at the time. So that means we can fly mini quads in the trees right next to the airfield, and we can fly fixed wing. Similarly, if we can keep them down low and fly them in that environment, it's called a protected environment. And uh, I was thinking, well, hey, you know, I'd like to fly fixed wing again. Why don't I design and build a fixed wing FPV racer? A small one, something small that'll fit through the gaps and something that's very agile, very nimble and also importantly very very tough because it's going to get the same sort of hammering a mini quad will get. Something you can fly around a mini quad course, through the hoops, you know, through the trees. That's really exciting me, I'm getting really keen on that. So I'm going to design and build a mini quad, a mini FPV fixed wing racing craft to do that and hopefully other people follow suit and we might get a little bit of a fixed wing FPV racing class going that you can fly proximity. You can fly it in areas where you couldn't fly any other kind of fixed wing. Let's see what happens. It also has to be very cheap and to that end I was looking on, it was RC Timer the other day and boy have they got a deal, a package deal. I don't know if it's any good. So I've ordered one to review. That'll be coming hopefully very soon. It's already ordered. Should be on its way in the next day or so. It's a com combination 200 milliwatt video transmitter, 5.8 gigahertz, and FPV camera. 700 TV line apparently, but it is CMOS, so it won't be the flashiest thing in the world. But the price, the price, it's, it's a gobsmacking. It's about 25 bucks, including shipping for the camera and the video transmitter. 
that is really, really you know, impressive because the, the other video transmitter that we used in the mini quad build, 200 milliwatt transmitter, that's 25 bucks on its own. And for this one, same price, you get the camera. And as I say, I don't know how good the camera is, I'll have to have a take a look at it, but it's gonna be a priority review when it arrives because if we can get that kind of functionality for the price of the video transmitter, everything thrown in, uh, including the wiring loom, then hey, that's gonna be brilliant and it makes it so much more practical for some people who can't afford stuff to get into the hobby, especially if I can knock up a little fixed wing mini quad, oh, sorry, fixed wing uh, mini FPV fixed wing flying machine, you know, racer, for you know a few bucks using core flute and carbon and maybe a bit of EPP. See what we can do. I'm quite excited about this project and I think if you're interested, tell me, you know, uh, so I can document the whole project and everyone else can build one as well, if it flies any good. Now, um, circuit board. I remember I'd, out, I'd send out these circuit boards. I've started sending them out. I'll be sending an email out to the people who um, can expect to find these in their mailbox shortly. Um, and if you don't get an email by the end of the week, then please remind me if you've already sent in and um, uh, said you'd like one, send me a reminder because you know I forget stuff and I lose emails and I say, send me a reminder. I've cut them to size and I've milled a little slot in there. So you just take them out of the envelope, stick them on your mini quad, sold them up and you're away. No hard work required. And that's about it for the not so weekly, weekly news. So, but I just want to answer a couple of questions. The video I put up regarding the, you know, the change, well, the, the new maps that CAA's put up here about where you can fly and where you can't fly, the, the heliport's really sort of thrown a spanner in the works for me. And so, you know, I put that video up and a lot of people have responded very positively, very favorably, you know, very, the support has been very humbling and I've shown the wife some of those and she's, you know, quite moved by the amount of worldwide support that we've got. Of course, there's a few naysayers and the local yobbos that, you know, anything that's good for me has got to be bad for them the way they see it. So, uh, but we ignore them. And, but the one thing I did notice, a lot of people asked the same questions and uh, were asked many, many, many times over in the comments. So for the benefit of those who, you know, didn't read the replies I made or may have had the same question thinking of asking it and didn't. Um, the big question people have been asking is, well, why don't you just travel just beyond the four kilometer zone, find somewhere to fly and fly there? And I mean, that's a damn good question. I mean, I can understand why people might ask that question if they'd never been here. <laughs> because we have a situation here where the surrounding ter terrain here is actually quite hilly and rough and, and uh, contoured. And the reason this town exists where it does is because this is the only flat bit of land for a long, long way. So you build a town on flat land, it's easier. You build an airfield on flat land, it certainly is. It's very hard to build an airfield on undulating contour. It's not really very useful. So they built the airfield and the town on the only flat land for miles. Which means that if you can't fly within 4K of the airfield, then you've got to travel an awfully long way before you can fly. Now I was lucky to find the farm, even that's not perfect because um, one of the fields we're allowed to fly on is steeply contoured and it's, you can't take off or land, it has to be hand launched and then sort of land on the side of the hill. And the other one is unfortunately positioned such that getting to it is a real difficulty because being a dairy farm, they've got car, cows coming up and down the races all the time and you get stuck in amongst the cows and you've got, only got certain windows when you can arrive and leave. So if you leave something behind and the cows are down the race, you can't get out for an hour or two until the cows are gone. You know, it's, it's, it's really, it's, Better than nothing, but really it's not the best. But now even that's out of the question because of the existence of the heliport. So this whole thing about traveling 4K, it just doesn't happen. I've, I, even yesterday I went out again and spent a lot of time looking around. There's just nothing. All the land that's there is either steeply contoured, covered in pine trees or eucalyptus trees because there's a lot of um, plantation forestry here. That's, the whole area is a forestry area or it's where there used to be a forest and the stumps are all dug up and the, the, the ground is roughly contoured and there's jagged bits of wood poking out everywhere and it's, you know, well, you know, you couldn't fly anything there. I did an AXN video flying there some time ago and it was really interesting. Um, or it's intensively dairy farmed. And when they intensively dairy farm stuff, they have electric fences everywhere and power lines and, and the farmers don't want you mowing their grass because that grass is gold. That's the grass that the cows eat to make the milk that earns the farmers all their money. So they don't want you mowing it, they want the cows eating it. So there's no way to make a nice strip. So you're still you know, pretty stuffed and the, the, the fields are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So you know, the flying fixed wing, it becomes really difficult unless you want to string your plane through a five wire fence, catch it in some power lines, or you know, basically destroy it in some other way. So really, not that practical. I could travel further. I could travel, but I have to travel a bit, at least 30 minutes to find anywhere else that's got some flat land. And that brings up an even bigger problem. And to explain what the problem is, I'll take the example of the Mini Member version 2 review I did recently, part two of that review, the flight test of the Mini Member um, Mini Quad. I built the Mini Member and I got it set up as best I could. Remember that according to the council's 
statements here. I'm not allowed to turn on a transmitter. I can't turn on any transmitting device in this workshop, no matter what the time of day or night, for fear that I might knock down somebody flying an RC model somewhere else on the field. They can do whatever the hell they like, but I can't even turn on my RC transmitter, can't turn on my FPV transmitter, nothing. No transmissions are allowed from this workshop, right? So I set it up as best I could. I packed all my gear up into the truck and I headed out to a flight area. Got to the flight area, I unpacked all my gear, I set everything up, I prepared to fly. As soon as I took off, whoa, what's going on here? There's black lines all over the video. Damn. I uh, had a quick investigation at the field. Ah, damn, there's obviously a loose connection here somewhere. Tapping the frame really hard, I got lines appearing. So, okay, pack everything back up, put it back in the truck, drive back to the workshop, get the mini quad out of the truck, bring it inside. Um, I had to unlock everything as well. Bring it inside, find the loose connection, solder that up, put it back together, okay? Put it back in the truck, drive back out to the flight area, unpack everything, set everything up, fly again, and suddenly I find, oh, there's still a problem. There's an additional problem causing intermittent loss of video signal. Oh, so, can't safely test it like that. Land the mini quad, put it back in the truck, pack up, drive back to the workshop, unlock the workshop, get out, put it on the bench, discover that the standard antenna, the little rubber ducky antenna that comes with the FPV gear, that was faulty straight out of the box, intermittent. Find another antenna, put it on the video transmitter, put everything back in the truck, drive back out to the flight area, unpack everything, set up. Finally, finally I get to do the FPV flight test, fly around, three minute flight, land, pack everything up, put it back in the truck, drive back to the workshop, open up the workshop, unpack everything, bring it back into the workshop. So you can see there was a lot of doing and throwing. Now, Remember that a video like that, it's a five minute video. Finally, all edited up and put on YouTube, five minutes. It took me a day, a day to make that video and six trips in the truck, back and forwards. You know, out, back, out, back, out, back. Before I could make a five minute video. And that's just totally, totally uneconomic. And it's happened before I've done other videos where I've had to go out, get out there, for example, once and I forgot the SD card. I mean, I'm old. I mean, that's why I have this list. I'm old, I forget stuff all the time. And if I make a list, sometimes I forget the list. But it means I got all the way out to do a flight test, unpack, oh damn, no SD card in the camera. Can't film anything. Pack it all up, go back, get an SD card, come all the way back out. And that, if you're having to travel 30 minutes, 45 minutes each way, that adds up. I cannot afford to spend, you know, what is it, um, three times, six times 30 minutes, can't afford to spend three hours driving and all the fuel involved to make a five minute video. Just, it's not economic. The very reason that I started, I decided, okay, I'll commit to this reviews thing, was because I could step outside the door of my workshop, fly something. If there was a problem, I could bring it back in, make a change, go back out, fly it. Another problem, bring it back in, make a change, go out, fly it. And I could do a five minute flight video in probably 15 or 20 minutes. Brilliant, and no fuel. But now, three hours of traveling, and two hours of mucking around, and the fuel involved in doing that, it's just, I might as well just hand my money out to people on the street because it's, it's a major loss. So for those people who say, why don't you just go further afield, it's not practical. If I was just flying on a Sunday with everybody else and it was just recreational flying, yeah sure. Traveling, you know, even an hour each way on a, on a Monday, or, or sorry, on a Sunday to have a afternoon's flying, that's quite viable, that's quite economic. But not when you've got to do this every day or every second day and you might have to spend three hours traveling. It just doesn't work. That's to answer those questions. In the meantime, I've got to get back to the bench now, lots to do. Stay tuned for a video coming up explaining what we're doing with, you know, the future and also the UHF stuff and all the stuff I mentioned. So um, hang in there. I'll be back shortly. Bye for now.